Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Witcher Circus. Today I'm here with 135J Man. Hello, hello. Hello to you too, J Man. And today we are going to be balancing the flagellant, so that's going to be fun. Oh boy. Yeah, this is one of the most difficult characters to balance because he's built different, he just has so many special things about him. But we're going to start with the abilities, and then we're going to go into the trinkets. My brother, you did do some tier lists, if I recall correctly, but you... Where did you put him in the tier lists? Uh, ooh, I can't remember. Oh yeah, he was bottom tier in the dodge tier list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did some interesting tier lists. <laughs> yeah, well, he has zero dodge. Yeah, so he's, he's garbage, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's how math works. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I think I put him in S tier for both the tier lists, honestly. I, I think I did too as well. Uh, well, you are correct. He's definitely S tier. Yeah, he's definitely one of the strongest characters. So I think we should look over his abilities first, see what needs a change. But what's going to need the most changes, I think, are going to be his trinkets and also his like unique abilities. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's go into abilities first and his unique abilities, which are, you know, when he drops below 40% HP, he gets plus 7 crit, plus 20% damage. At Death's Door, he gets buffs instead of debuffs. He heals the other characters when he drops to Death's Door. And when he dies, he heals all the other characters for 10. Or rather, they heal themselves for 10 because spaghetti code. <laughs> yeah, spaghetti code. <laughs> yeah. So first, into the Punish, what do you think about this ability, my brother? Well, if we compare it to uh, Bleed Out, then Punish has, has an insane amount of accuracy uh, compared to Bleed Out. Yeah, it does. They're both anti-stall abilities. Um, you have a really difficult time stalling against Bleeding uh, because it deals so much damage. That's guaranteed 18 damage uh, if you get the Bleed. That is true. Yeah. So... Not, not to mention you could get crits, and it also applies stress at the same time, so it's quite a unique uh, bleed ability. Yep. It is definitely one of the strongest basic abilities that there is in the Witcher Circus, because most basic abilities are kind of bad if you look at Crush, if you look at Smite, but um, even Open Vein on the higher man is kind of just meh. If you just gave Open Vein 6 bleed for 3 rounds, you gave it more crit mod and you gave it plus stress, that's basically punish. At least that's uh, what it feels like. It's just a really nice ability. But would you change it? Uh, yeah, it definitely needs some sort of change, but I'm not entirely sure what would be best. Probably like 95 accuracy. Uh, so that suits it better. Making that very reliable accuracy just a little bit worse, so the flagellant has to bring more accuracy trinkets on him and uh, more accuracy enabling characters. That's your idea. Yeah, I think it would be a, a, a slight nerf that the flagellant does need. Yeah. Maybe even uh, lower the crit modifier. Yeah, the crits, <laughs> the crits feel great if you're the last character alive and uh, you're just fighting in a 1v1, for example, like, it just hurts. Those punish crits, man. Yeah, and plus 9 is an insane amount. Yeah, so you'd say, like, 95 accuracy, maybe crit mod, just turn it down by, like, 2%. Mm. I think... Yeah. I, I think that would make punish a little bit more, more of, a, like, a, a diet version, and I think I'm okay with that, actually. It won't, it won't make it too much weaker in those matchups where you really need it to work, like against the Lamper, for example, where you're already at a disadvantage. But it's definitely going to make it a little bit less of a screw-you card against things like Grave Robber at the end, Antiquarian at the end. I think it's overall a decent choice. And, yeah, what do you think about the, the base bleed and the stress? I think we shouldn't change that. I, I would like more bleed chance, but I'd rather just give the flagellant trinkets a little bit of a buff, maybe give him some bleed chance on the trinkets, rather than changing that. I think that for him to get reliable bleeds, he needs to bring a trinket with it. I think that would make more sense with this. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, on to the Reign of Sorrows. Now, would you change this ability? 
good question. Um, it's definitely powerful, especially with crushed hemlock. Yeah, like, it's still applies to crushed hemlock. Yeah, <laughs> it, it can apply <laughs> a lot of bleed and blight at the same time. You can kind of compare it to play grenade. So they both have the same accuracy. Reign of Sorrows does more damage, it gets more crit, and uh, it doesn't do quite as much DOT, but it does more stress. So they're almost identical, except Flashman can use it from the front line and Plague Doctor can use it from the back line. Except that Plague Doctor is a Plague Doctor and Flagellant is the Flagellant. <laughs> so <laughs> well, would, would you change this ability is the question. Well, one has to keep in mind that Plague Doctor can't always Plague Grenade uh, at the end of the match. Meanwhile, Flagellant can still Reign of Sorrows. Even though it's not going to be very relevant, assuming that it's kind of a fair match. Yeah, both yeah. team lose char uh, characters. Yeah. Uh, Once some characters do get knocked out, Reign of Sorrows is still going to be available. Like characters on your side, but Plague Grenade is just removed. Yeah. Um, but actually, maybe just ner uh, nerf the crit modifier, and it should be fine, I think. Hmm. Well, we do have to keep in mind that the Flagellant doesn't really have a trinket like Volatile Concoction for the Plague Doctor, which is what makes Plague Grenade so scary, I think. Oh, you yeah. know, if the Flagellant had a trinket with plus 15 accuracy and 20% bleed skill chance, that would be totally insane. Like, Volatile Concoction is what the Flagellant wants Crown of Thorns to be. But just isn't. So True. that is that is kind of a balancing factor. I feel like it the crit mod might be might be a bit too much. I think if we're reducing the crit mod of punish to seven, we should reduce this down to like three point five, just to make it half of the of the punish. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think that, that would be that would be fair because it feels really annoying when it crits. I, I will have to say. Yeah, sixteen damage. The damage, like the damage mod could be reduced a little bit, but I think with the crit mod being kind of almost half to this would be an okay ability, honestly. Yeah. Okay, into the exsanguinate. Now, this is a this is a very important <laughs> one. Yeah, how does one nerf uh, one of the abilities that's unique to flash on it only? True. How does one nerf the ability that really just defines the flagellant? When he goes to low HP, he just drops an exsanguinate on you, hurts the heck out of you, bleeds you for an insane amount, and then heals himself for half his health bar. Minimum. Hmm. It is it is kind of difficult to balance this. I think that it does have low accuracy, so that's definitely something to, to consider. Yeah, uh, keep the accuracy. Yeah, keep keep the accuracy what it is. I think that to actually balance this ability, we're just gonna have to not touch it. We're gonna have to touch the flagellant in other ways to make this ability balanced. Oh, I was thinking of nerfing the uh, healing skills to minus hundred percent, and then maybe buff the amount of healing the flagellant has to himself. Oh, reducing the healing skills to minus a hundred and making the heal like seventy-five. Yeah, or maybe like sixty, sixty-five. I see. So then he wouldn't really be able to, to keep spamming it. Yeah, because he's supposed to be exhausted after using it. And like on the second time he uses it, uh, how much does he heal for? Like 16? What was it? Uh, with Bit, Gauntlet, uh, he still heals for 15, so it's definitely a big amount. Yeah, 15. Yeah, without the Gauntlet, he will heal for 9. Yeah. We should make it way less... Uh, spammable in that sense yeah you know? so if, if you do manage to punish the flagellant to the point where he has to use it again then at the very least he won't really heal himself for for a lot yeah i think that makes sense and i think we should neuter the crit chance a little bit too with these changes i think that I'm, i might not change so many of his base core abilities but i think that his crit mod should also go down by two because crit exsanguinates are just ridiculously strong but, oh yeah, he can hit for 21. Yeah, he can when he's at this <laughs> door and after after the buffs and all that. So just reducing the crit mod on that would make sense. Just reduce it by 2% again and make the healing skills minus 100, but increase the healing to, let's say, maybe two-thirds of his HP. 66? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. 
two thirds of his HP, like 66% max HP. That's gonna allow him to pretty much heal as much as he does already with Gauntlet of Absolution. So he's gonna heal for like 24 out of 36 with that. Yeah, it's gonna be 31 with the uh, God of Absolution. Yeah, it's gonna be quite quite good. You probably won't have to spam it, but if you do, then you know you're gonna be pretty screwed. So yeah, I yeah. do like that change. Okay, how about reclaim? Would you change reclaim? That's a very good question. Um, we don't really have many abilities compared to only uh, what's it called? Rejuvenation, rapers, and leg wounds. Yeah, those uh, abilities were completely different from Reclaim. Yeah, they are kind of limited by positioning and also the amount you can use of the no, uh, that, that is true. The only thing limiting this is how much the uh, Flashland uh, <laughs> takes from bleed damage. If, uh, if you look at it from like a very statistical point of way, he's only getting plus 3 HP from this considering he oh, doesn't yeah. get any crits, so technically it's a, a horrible ability. <laughs> and yet it still just punishes the enemy. Yeah, but even the then, character. it's still really good, because having that regen on a character... We all know regen is really powerful, because once you apply it on a character, you can just click him while he's at this star, and then you still get to go for an offensive action or something of the likes. And not only that, bleeding yourself on the flash one can actually be really good in some matchups because it's going to allow you to use your redeem and exsanguinate earlier. Not to mention that if you run him with an Arbos, you can just heal to cure those bleeds. So overall, it's a really strong ability. Yeah, that, that fixes the downside of the ability. Yeah, uh, it definitely does. I think that it's strong, but I don't really think it needs a fix. Hmm. I think that it's definitely very dynamic, and uh, it it does take some skill to make it work, I and also a lot of synergy with other characters. I think that it's actually probably an okay ability at the moment. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the, at the Redeem then. So, we already changed out the Exsanguinate, are we going to change out the Redeem as well? Yeah, I think it needs to have the same logic. Uh, minus 100 healing skills, and then a little bit extra healing. So, healing max HP on another character, maybe don't make it go up quite as much, because that would be a bit crazy. Maybe yeah. make the heal on another character 50, and then heal on yourself, go up to 60. Yeah, yeah. These that numbers sounds... feel like they're being decided a little bit arbitrarily, but um, I think that you shouldn't really heal other characters for that much. Like, it's already crazy how much you can heal them. And you still want yeah, to heal yourself for quite a bit, but not as much as Exsanguinate, I feel. And also, you can crit heal, so that's oh, basically 86% yeah. HP. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, crit heal, so it's just gonna heal the entire health bar. Yeah. So, so just nerf it, uh, the healing skills, and then buff the uh, amount of healing. Yeah, just a touch, buff it just a touch. Exactly. Okay, in terms of Endure, so now we go to the two abilities that are kind of like the the black sheep of the of the flatland, especially Endure. <laughs> uh, Suffer is okay, yeah. but yeah, Endure... I used Endure a bit, but not much. <laughs> how, how did that go? Yeah, it did not go well. <laughs> yeah, I expected as much. <laughs> uh, if you use the same logic uh, with Reclaim, then it's only a net gain of 10 stress yeah. when you use it. Yeah. Except, if you, go, except you uh, can't really use it um, like the Reclaim, you know, it doesn't really... The minus stress doesn't give you as much power as the regen does, like giving you free actions, and you don't really apply Exsanguinate and Redeem quite as much. Exactly. And also, the, the Jester's stress heal is just straight up better. Oh yeah, uh, way better. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, way better. It's it heals the same, but it also does minus strain sequence, which is really good. And you know it buffs up your finale. Oh yeah. Gives a crit rate too, which is super useful on Chester. Uh, yeah, the, the crit rate. It's one of the few abilities that actually buffs up the crit rate. So you only have soul battle bound and inspiring tune, and you can really only spam the inspiring tune. Oh yeah, true. So if you're going for finale crits, that uh, crit chance is definitely good there. But in terms of Endure, how would we buff this to make it feel 
a bit more like a reclaim, make it feel a bit more like it could fit the Flagellant's kit. Hmm. Well, let's go crazy. Uh, if we're gonna buff it, I think. Yeah, I think let's so Let's go like, too. it heals 50 stress. Yeah. And what would be the downside of that? Well, if we go with the same logic as Reclaim, the thing is, Reclaim is useful in almost every matchup. Endure can be really useless. Uh, yeah, and also we kind of want him to be afflicted sometimes so we can make use of his uh, Madman's color trinket. That is true, that is very much true. We could make this... You know what we could actually do? Do uh, so. We could make Endure still a stress heal for 30, which would still be quite strong. Or, let me think, actually. Yeah, we could still make it a stress heal for 30. And we could also make it work against HP, so it could be maybe a direct heal. But it would oh. inflict direct damage on you instead of inflicting a bleed. So it would do direct heal, direct damage, and it would do way more stress. It would do, like, 50 stress to yourself. Something crazy like that. Oh, so, like, it heals stress and HP... Yeah. And then you take 50 stress. And you take 50 stress and take HP damage. Oh, and HP damage. So you can't spam it at this store, for example. Oh yeah. Because you yeah, can you can do that with reclaim if the position is is favorable for you. Maybe yeah, not 50 cannot. stress, maybe like 40 stress. Yeah, 40 stress makes sense. So you cure 30, you heal for like what do you think would be an appropriate amount? Uh, seven to nine. Oh, you want to make it uh, RNG? Okay. Yeah, Arbalist heal, I think. An Arbalist heal. So heal for seven to nine, and how much damage would you do to yourself? Um, 20% HP. Oh, max HP. Um, yeah. Max HP. I see, 20% max HP. How much damage would that actually be on the flagellant at the moment? Um, 10% is 3.6, um, so it'd be 7.2, and I think this game rounds down. So it would uh, probably be 7 damage. Yeah, or 8, depending on the spaghetti code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you do run max HP on him, that it's would... Uh, scale. That would scale. Yeah, that's actually a good idea, I do like that. Heal for 7 to 9 on other characters. Well, that would make it is that you could run it instead of the Reclaim, but it would probably be better if you actually have other trinkets like the Madman Scholar, which we'll see very soon. Yeah. So yeah, you would actually have a choice between bringing Reclaim and Endure, which are these abilities that you can kind of spam to still help out your team. So support Flagellant would uh, see some new uses. Which is difficult to make work. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And what about Suffer? How would you change Suffer? Well, we've seen uh, Suffer being used recently uh, in the latest tournament. We and did, yeah. It worked out pretty well, I'd say. It uh, did, definitely. So, yeah. I wouldn't really know how to buff uh, this ability. Uh, I think I would know one thing, actually. I would yeah. love it if Suffer cleared debuffs on yourself, actually. Oh. It might sound a little bit weird, but um, it is very annoying when you're trying to play support Flatland and someone just keeps spamming Guard Break on you with like Puncture or Slam. And so now you actually have an ability to clear those debuffs without needing to run Crusader or Arbalist. So I think that would be quite smart because if they do focus down your Flatland and you're trying to play an Immortal Flatland team, you really have nothing to do with him. With, because you have like abilities to support the other characters, so you have no way of actually supporting yourself. That way would be kind of suffer with the death resistance and minus strength taken, but it, it just doesn't really help in those situations. So I feel like clearing debuffs would at the very least help you out a little bit. It's also going to help out against the, the Yop, so that, that would be good. Oh yeah. Hmm. I'm a bit hesitant because clearing debuffs is pretty powerful. Uh... It's only on yourself, not on the other character. Yeah. Hmm. But then Flatland can almost comfortably uh, be guarded and just support the team that way. 
Well, you will you will have to use your your abilities very carefully, and there's still and you know even if you do clear the debuff, you still have to guard again, and then you can just get guard broken. So that could still happen. It's not a you would have to use two actions just to reapply the guard, and they would just have to use one action to damage you and break the guard again. Yeah, okay. So yeah. it's it's not a game game breaker, you know. It would be a yeah. game breaker if it gave you like a can't be guard broken for two rounds or something. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely make it uh, broken. Yeah, I think it would just give you a little bit of versatility, just a touch. All right, let's go with that then. Okay, now on to the trinkets we go. This one is uh, maybe the flashlight abilities. You want to look at that first? Oh, you mean like how he heals everyone on Death Door and yeah, his buffs. Yeah, would you would you change that out considering that we already kind of neutered his abilities a bit? Um. Well, I think I would change the uh, the ability to crit heal when he's going on this or uh, healing the other characters. Oh yeah, that is so annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that is so annoying. And when he heals the other character, and when the other characters like when he dies and he heals the other characters for like twenty. Oh yeah. Oh, that is so brutal. When he goes to that store and he heals the other characters for like 12, it's just... it's nasty. It is really nasty. Make yeah. it so those heals can't crit, right? Yeah, that's definitely one suggestion that I have. Yeah. Like, it's bad enough that they exist. Yeah, it's so, a free divine comfort, almost. Yeah, essentially. So at the very least, they won't be able to crit. You know what, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. That, that amount of RNG can just be game-breaking at the end. When you think like, okay, I just take out the flagellant now, the man-at-arms doesn't have that much HP, he'll heal for 10, but it's okay, and then you just you just drop the flagellant <laughs> to zero, boom, heal for 12, and then you kill the flagellant, boom, heal for 20. I've seen that happen, I've had that happen. And, you know, now the man-at-arms is almost full HP. Yeah, he's just chilling at 32 HP now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, then. That uh, does get and, changed out. And his buffs? Uh, like crit and damage buff? Yeah. Mm, well, he already has reduced damage to Flaxland. I don't know if he has reduced crit uh, compared to other characters. Let me take a look. Uh, what do you mean reduced crit? Well, he has base crit rate of 6. Yeah, that's uh, not Flaxland. much. Um, but he has base damage, which is basically uh, the smallest base damage of all the characters. It is, is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's deliberate. I can see that. But the crit rate is a bit high uh, when compared to other characters. Like, Levo has less at 5. Uh, so maybe make the crit rate 3? Uh, base 3 crit rate? Oh, you want to tune it down to 3? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so that, he's, this is, that his buffs make sense uh, when he drops below 40% HP. I mean, I feel like we already nerfed the crit rate on his ability so much. Like, now Punish is gonna be a 10% crit chance. Yeah, that's decent, I would say. That's less than Stunning Blow. Yeah, Stunning Blow needs a crit rate modifier nerf too. <laughs> <laughs> it does, actually. <laughs> it should be negative 4, not plus 4. It does, actually. Um, hmm. I feel like tuning it down to 3 is just a bit too much, not gonna lie. What about Fallen? Or 5? Five? 5 would be okay. I would be okay yeah. with 5. Then it's like levels. Yeah. Yeah, and then five. he still gets some nice crit mod when he drops low, low HP. I think that would be okay. Yeah, that makes sense. We're basically removing all the flagellant crits at this point. I don't, I don't think we need to <laughs> make it 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put it at 5. Okay, and in terms of trinkets... Let's have a look at uh, probably the Crown of Thorns first, right? Sure. Okay, how do you change Crown of Thorns? Excellent question. Hmm. Does it need a change? Well, what is this trinket supposed to do? Uh, well, like, when I look at the name Crown of Thorns, does it mean that everyone bleeds? And himself? I think the name of the Crown of Thorns basically just makes you godlike, but at uh, at your own detriment to some extent. 
So you get the accuracy, which is what the Flash won't really want for his abilities. But now you hurt yourself, which can be good as well, because you're a Flash wand. Yeah, he likes the pain. <laughs> he does. I think this is a really well-designed trinket. I honestly don't think it needs any changes. I think you're correct. Yeah. It would maybe be nice if instead of plus 15% damage while bleeding, we gave it plus 5% crit while bleeding. Hmm. Because the damage is essentially useless, and the crit would be quite nice. Oh yeah, crit makes the flat one even more broken. That's why I nerfed the crit rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we now we would ju just change it out to the Crown of Thorns, which is an, a trinket that's definitely played. But um, it could be played a little bit more. It could get a slight nerf and a slight buff, I think. What about plus crit rate uh, received while bleeding as well? On top of the damage taken? Uh, no, instead of the damage taken. I think that would be a buff to the Crown of Thorns. Oh. I think that, the, say that? the damage taken is definitely a balancing factor here. It just, just makes you take way more damage. If you pair it with a, a trinket that gives you protection, you're still gonna take more damage than you would before. It's it's really quite crazy. It it oh, makes yeah. you a lot more susceptible to the finale. Yeah, and it also makes reclaim hurt more, so you can't spam it as much. Yeah, to yeah to an extent, yeah. Yeah, let's just maybe change it to crit, and otherwise it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't think it needs, like, plus crits taken while bleeding. I think that'll just be a bit of an overbuff. So, uh, yeah. plus 5% crit while bleeding. I think that would, that would help this trinket, because the damage just doesn't feel great. Apart from when you're at this store, you go exsanguinate your crit for 20. I mean, <laughs> that helps with the Crown of Thorns, but then again, that's just kind of a bit too much as well. So just giving it crit right would be would be cooler, in my opinion. Yeah, it was still crit for 18. Yeah, yeah. I'll still crit for a lot, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. In terms of Gone to the Web Solution now, this is the biggest one. This is the one that needs the most changes. I, I will say, I've said this before, I'll say it again, this is the most broken trinket in the Butcher Circus. Even more powerful than the Stabilizing Tiller. How would you change this one, my brother? Well, I think we need a trinket that really punishes stress, but I'm not entirely sure if it needs to be this one. Uh, it's really useful for the flat one. It is un unbelievably useful. Like, it makes some stress teams just lose matchups. For example, yours, the old gold. If you yeah. if you play against the flat one with Cold of Absolution, you, it's just a death sentence. And it makes a lot of matchups against damage also way more difficult because the protection is helpful and the healing skills essentially means that if, if you allow the flagellant, if you're playing, for example, a damage team like Halo Comp and you're playing against Hit Squad, if you allow the flagellant to use a reclaim and then use a redeem, you're down two health bars approximately and you're down regions as well. You're just losing. And that's for a trinket that would also have a good, a great time against stress. So it's a trinket that does basically everything, and there's no reason not to take it. That's kind of the biggest problem I have with it, because you there are other trinkets that are good, but this is just so good that not taking it is going to be bad for you. Yeah, it's good in every matchup, and that's actually that's something a trinket should do, uh, unless it's like a damage dealing trinket. Uh, on a damage dealer character. I think I think uh, it's okay for trinkets to be good in like every matchup. Like if you look at numbing incense, it's good for most matchups. Yeah, for, for sure. Matchup. <laughs> but even then, it's not a great trinket. It's just a good trinket. This one just does too much at uh, yeah at it. So I think that the on being hit self stress that either has to go or it has to be tuned down because it's it's just way too punishing well the old goal does need a counter <laughs> i feel like <laughs> uh so let's see maybe you should change it to an anti-stress trinket or maybe even split this trinket in two one for healing and protection and one uh, entirely against stress well I wouldn't take that entirely against stress trinket because 
that's just like another brass bugle. I really, I'm really against taking trinkets that are just one matchup only, because if you run against another matchup, then you just don't have a trinket. I see. Okay, then remove the prat, and then we have another one that's uh, plus healing and plus prat. Then you still have decent trinket because of the plus healing. Hmm. I think, does that make sense? Uh, kind of. It does kind of make sense. I think that to make this trinket good... Oh, uh, I think to make this trinket good, we have to buff the following three. Like, that's one important thing. And I think that we should move the protection from this trinket to the last breath color, for example. And color, I think yeah. that the healing skills and the self hit stress should be toned down. So I would say healing skills toned down to 25, because he already has bigger heals. And the oh, yeah. self stress could go down to like minus eight and now it won't be quite as punishing and you wouldn't take it every matchup anymore it would be a drink that's still quite good but it won't be just a take or lose kind of uh, thing on the flash hunt I, th I believe yeah that sounds really good and it matches up with uh, festering vapors dealing eight stress and then healing eight stress yeah makes sense yeah, I think, I think that would be okay of a change for the Gauntlet of Absolution. So it still fits the same role, but it doesn't fit it quite as well. And now you might actually consider changing it out for other trinkets such as the Falling Ones, because we're definitely going to give them some buffs. Yeah, and with with this nerf, it's not as brain dead as before, where you just take it always. Yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. Now the plus healing skills are still good, but since your flash will just heal so much already with like the first tick, Having that plus healing skills might not be a game changer. And against stress, you might actually be better off taking numbing instance because you'll still have stun resistance on top. So yeah, exactly. there's definitely a lot of nuance to this. Okay, how about last breath color? Maybe you want to take me up on my suggestion of giving it plus 10 prod? Yeah, definitely. Let's give it plus 10 prod. And... Otherwise... I think it's fine. Like, it's very risky trinket, and it does it well with the plus 20 dodge. Like, you've used it before in the past, and... I, I have, yeah. And you're really good at using it when you need to risk it uh, for the biscuit. Yeah. I have I have put it at A tier. I'm not sure if it quite fits at A tier, but I think that it actually fits the flagellant quite a lot, especially now, because the plus healing received of HP below 20, and the plus proc means that this is actually going to be the go-to trinket if you aren't playing against damage or if you want to just stay alive with the flash wand. Because since you're healing yourself for 66 and 60% 60 of your max HP with the flash wand, now with the plus healing received, you're basically going to heal for your entire health bar with this. And you're going to have protection on top, which is quite good. And even if you drop to that store, you're still going to have more stuff to keep you alive. But it at the same time, you're not going to have the brokenness of the content of Absolution, which is just healing the other characters for crazy amounts. So I, I think that overall, with the protection, strength is just going to be great. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Alright. How about Madman Scholar? This is going to be the, the best one. <laughs> Need to make it fitting to the name Madman Scholar. Yeah. So, we have changed out the Endure, so doing stress to yourself definitely is a lot easier now. You do 40 with it. Yeah, you can get yourself afflicted uh, on round 2. That's the idea and the hope. Yeah, that is yeah. the plan, that is the hope, that is the dream. <laughs> yeah. And now you can actually use Endure without feeling like you're wasting the match, because you can still heal other characters in in every matchup, so it's, it's going to be useful in every matchup, especially against stress, but will be useful in other situations as well and do you think the buffs that it has are enough to make it great at the moment hmm well if we compare it to the the best trinket ever called the uh, sanity spain yeah then uh, <laughs> then i think we need actually a bit more buffs uh, if that makes sense because it's already risky uh, being rapturous with the flash alarm. It is. It is quite risky, yeah. I uh, think that for this trinket, I would actually increase the stress taken to 25. So with the Endure, you'd actually take 60, 
which would be quite crazy for sure. But I would increase the heart attack stress heal from 100% to 200%. <laughs> then you are at 110 stress. You will you will go down to 110 stress, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is that is an insane buff for for the Madman Scholar. Well, I think it's fitting. Uh, yeah. If you do want to keep spamming Endure, you're still going to take like another 60 stress, but you will be out of heart attack at the very least with this. Uh, we made Endure 40 base, right? Yeah. Uh, on himself. Yeah, yeah that's... that's uh... That's... He deals 50 stress now uh, when he uses it. Yeah, 50, 50, sorry, not 60. Yeah. 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 yeah, so it's definitely very cool. You're most likely going to get afflicted with just two pops of the Endure. Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. The hope, the dream. And after that, you're going to have plus bleed skill chance if afflicted. I think that we can take away the plus 10% healing received and just change it out into something that fits this more. Because mm. the idea behind that healing received right now is so at the very least the trinket doesn't feel useless if you run against uh, other matchups, but the trinket is always going to be useful from now on because Endure is just going to make you go afflicted, so I don't think we need that there. Yeah, maybe plus 10 accuracy if afflicted. How's that sound? Plus, that would be really good. Yeah, that would really help the flagellant, I'd say. I would I would quite like that. Alright, let's go with that. Plus 10 accuracy if afflicted, so you'd have plus 30 bleed skill chance and plus 10 accuracy and damage on afflicted, so you'd have like plus 50 damage on affliction, plus 30 bleed <laughs> skill chance and plus 10 accuracy, so he's going to be an absolute beast when he actually gets afflicted. Yep, and I he's mad. I do like that very much. I think Madman's Scholar is going to be a very nice trinket with this change. Okay, what about Confessor's Gauntlet? Yeah, that is... I don't use this often, uh, but I've seen it be used uh, like once or twice against novice players. Uh, yeah, the thing about this trinket is that uh, the 6 accuracy is nice, but you have just way better options. And the damage doesn't really change too much, and the crit can be useful, but most of the times you don't even notice it. And even if you do, it's just you'd be better off running Hemlock, for, yeah, exactly. for example. I think that the, this drink is just meh. It's mostly meh. Yeah, Hemlock is 4 guaranteed damage uh, with Rain of Sorrows, as long as you get the Blight. Uh, plus 5% crit, that's gonna deal 10 extra stress when you crit. Yeah. And deal one or two more damage with Rain of Sorrows, and with Punish, it's not gonna change too much, I think, compared to Hemlock. You know how I would change out this trinket? What would you change? I would remove the 6 accuracy and give it 15% bleed skill chance, so the Flagellant actually has a bleeding trinket. Oh, like, almost make it Crimson Hook-like. Uh, kind of Crimson Hook-like, yes. I'm kind of trying to make it like a Spiked Bat at the same time, in but not making it too much stronger than Spiked Bat, so you're not gonna have just base damage, and you're not gonna have as much bleed as Spiked Bat, but you're still gonna have to plus crit, and you're gonna have to plus damage for when the characters are actually bleeding, and plus 15% skill chance is still quite good. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think that would be quite a, quite a decent trinket then. You could yeah, pair it with, with, uh, with other ones for that uh, bleed skill chance if you do want it. Yeah, he doesn't really have any that boost his bleed skill chance, so... Apart from, apart from Madman Scholar, but that's going to be like a play style that you only take uh, every now and then. Yeah, he needs to be afflicted to get that sweet 30%. Yeah, yeah. Okay then, I think that's it for the Flagellant. What do you think? I With think, our final Flagellant nerf. <laughs> I, I think we might, might have neutered Content of Absolution too hard. <laughs> you think so? I, I don't know, it's still quite good, 25% healing skills and stress minus 8, like that's still quite nice, but we might have neutered it a bit too hard, I'm not entirely sure. Well, he's still gonna auto win against Mana Lamps, which I think is true. A, a good idea, because Mana Lamps is a strong character. Yeah, that is, that is true, it's definitely still a very good trinket. Mm, you would you would still take Haunted of Absolution and Last Breath Color together, that would be a really strong combo, but uh, still. 
Oh yeah. That also makes the plasma that's less uh, offensive. It does. Uh, it does. I think I think that's okay. I think that's a, a good rework. I think the, the flagellant is now more balanced. Also, do you want to tell everyone um, how good you are at game design, my brother? <laughs> well, I have a game design degree. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I talked with my brother about it. I gave him a good source, and yeah, we studied up a bit, and we are uh, we have played this a lot. We have played Virtual Circus for over two years. Yeah. So. We have a pretty good idea what works and what doesn't work and what makes characters a bit more balanced. Yeah, re relatively good. Not, not great, far from it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one is perfect. That's a fact. Yeah, of course not. All right, I think that's a pretty good change. Uh, do you want to maybe give some words on my Helen rework and the Plague Doctor rework, how you could have done it a little bit differently? <laughs> well, it's just my opinion. Uh, it's not necessarily a fact or anything. Uh, but I think the Hellion uh, buff is a bit strong, uh, a bit too on the strong side. And the Plague Doctor nerf is uh, a buff, actually. Uh, they're both buffs. The Plague Doctor buff is pretty fine, I would say. Uh, you believe the Plague Doctor is fine, but the Hellion is just a bit too strong. You think that yeah, uh, the damage mods and the accuracy are a bit much. Yeah, especially the accuracy. I think that's the, uh, the biggest issue. Yeah, I did bump them up to 100, which is is definitely a bit much. The only, like, if you compare it to Leper and uh, the new flash on accuracy and maybe even Crusader with Smite or Zealous, it definitely is a bit too much. I was just looking at Arbol's values, you know, but I think we might have to tackle the Arbol sometime too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But at the very least, the, the Flagellant feels more like a dynamic and more balanced character, so we might tackle the Arbalist another time. Do keep in mind oh, yeah. that uh, she might feel very powerful as the game is going right now, but since we're buffing other characters, her power in relativity is going to go down. So hmm. we, do, we do have to think about that when we actually want to buff the Arbalist, because if you give a character, like a weak character, if you give them a buff, and if you give the strong character a nerf, they're, they might not even be on the same level. The Arbos might actually be below the weak character. Yeah, we wouldn't want that. We would not want that. That's too much of a, of a huge change. But yeah, thank you a lot for being uh, on the on this episode of Balancing the Butcher Circus. Thank you for letting me be here. It's an honor. Of course. And I'm, I'm always glad to make videos with you, my brother. Me too. Right. I love it. And I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers. Cheers.